Good morning, church. I am uh, thrilled to be here with you guys. I want to just kind of reiterate a couple announcements that I think are unbelievably important. Uh, We're going to have baptisms in November, November 8th. So if you have not been baptized, um, I believe it's November 8th. I don't, I'm not, it's close. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. So if you have not been baptized, um, um, you should do that. I think God will lay that on your heart and it's really important. It's really beautiful, and if you have not seen baptisms here, it's really off the chain. And so, um, please sign up, and we'd love to. If you have any questions about that or anything we can do to help you, please let us know. You can let Connections know. We'll help you with that. And um, Wednesday night classes, um, there will be this month, so this Wednesday is a class. Uh, to be honest, I wasn't able to be at the first class, and so um, there's one this week, and sometimes I can be a little weird about coming in late, but if I can come, I'm going to come, and you're more than welcome to. I think it'll be great, and so come on out and check that out. It's just a chance to go deeper. You'll all be welcome, and if you're brand new to the Bible, it'll be great for you, so come on out. Uh, we are all about the next generation and children, so we believe that, that, the, that the children's ministry is the best place for your kids. If they're here, we do ask this always. If they get loud uh, or antsy, if you would please step out quickly, because we all want distraction-free Worship. I think we can all agree on that. All righty. I um, want to get started, and we're going to pray in a second, so I want to share a passage of Scripture with you. Ephesians 1, 17 through 20, and this is what I want from you more than anything. It's a really cool piece of Scripture if you're not familiar with it. It's a prayer. I love looking at prayers in the Bible and then, and then plugging them into the context of me and us. So here's what it says. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. You have no idea how much hope is found here and in Christ. You really don't. You can't even take it in. And maybe it's your first time here or you've only been here a couple times. You have no idea all that God can and will and wants to do in your life if you will be committed to him. You you can't even trust me. you got no idea, all right? Then it says, I want you to know the riches of his glorious inheritance. We want you to know more than anything that you are the righteousness of Christ. If you've asked Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins, they're washed away. It's so incredible, it's hard to take in. If you sin this morning, if you sin during worship, all right, it's washed away, okay? It's an incredible truth. We don't need to beat ourselves up or have guilt and shame. It's washed away because of the grace of God. That is incredible. And then, as if that's not enough in this, in this scripture, it says, and, um, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. And we want you to know God's power today. And, oh, and that's what we're going to talk about today, how you can experience the power of God, all of you, all right? Literally experience it. I hope God speaks to you today. And while we're doing this, today's a special day. We're going to celebrate our past a little bit. Um, this past week, I was able to meet with a young pastor named Pastor Jacob, and he is an incredible young guy. He's 22 years old, and God's placed him in my life. And uh, man, this guy, God's got his hands all over this guy. And he says, man, um, I want to have a, a, a story like the Medway story in, in, in the church that I'm a part of. I want to experience God's power like that. Um, how, what would you say to me? How can I have that? And I'm like, oh, Pastor Jake, you are right on time. Because if I could ever write a message about that, that's this week. And he's been watching online, and it's cool. People literally all over the world watch online. That's cool. And so I'm going to share that with you as well, how to experience the power of God. Before we pray, let me ask you right now. It's great when you, when you go into a message and right before prayer to be like, okay, what kind of application am I looking for from God? Where do you need the power of God right now? Where do you, I'm asking you, okay? In your heart, we're going to pray in a second, but I, I know one or two areas right now, I totally need to go back. I need the power of God more than ever. Where is that for you, all right? Let's pray. Bow your heads and pray with me. Hey, God, it's your time. It's your time now. We, we believe that you will speak to us and challenge us, and, and it is incredible. And we can experience your power and the power of your Bible, and we can come here, and if we are open-minded, leave here and literally never be the same. We can look back. Have no idea of this, but look back in five and ten years and be like, that was a profound day in my family. That was a profound day in our marriage, in my life. Whoa, I had no idea what was going to happen after that. God, I pray you reveal yourself to each and every one of us in powerful ways. We believe this can happen, and now it's between you and us. We open our hearts and minds to you. Speak to us and give us the courage to grow and change. We pray this in Jesus' name. Let's all agree and say, 
Amen. All righty. Ironically, uh, today, if you're new around here, uh, I'll fill you in on our story a little bit. It's an incredible story. It's a wild story. Today marks 12, uh, 12 years for me. That 12, 12 years ago today, I left a career in civil engineering and, and um, went to become a pastor of a little old church uh, in, in Medway, Ohio. And um, it, was, it was a small church. It was a, a declining church. Some people would say a dying church. And that was about 12 years ago today. Today, And uh, thanks to God, and thank, well, thanks, you know, that's cool. But, um, well, Bob, if you're going to clap, please don't make it, like, weird, all right? All right? I mean, go for it or whatever. No. But um, um, <laughs> thanks to God and, and thanks to you people, oh, my goodness, it has just, I'm telling you, and, and if you've been around any time at all, you know, it's been the ride of our lives. Just cra- like, hold on, buckle up, dude. Better have two seat belts. Better put a helmet on. It has been an incredible ride. And, boy, any of you that have been here any any period of time, have we ever experienced the power of God? Amen, right? I mean, we have experienced the power of God, and, and we, we want that uh, for you. Uh, let me tell you a little about, about uh, where this church was 12 years ago. Um, first, let me show you a picture in just a second of uh, where we were. We weren't here. Uh, we've only been here a few years, and we've had to build on here, but of where we were. We were a mile and a half away in Medway, and we weren't on the main drag in Medway. We were off the main drag of Medway, if that's possible. And I got a picture of our, of our old building. Everybody remember? Raise your hand if you were there. If you went to, oh, wow, a lot of you, a lot of you. Now, um, so that's still there. And uh, I remember when I drove up, I'm like, ugh. Any, any of you want to be honest? Did you think? And I thought it was the way I described it, but I didn't want to offend people who went here. But I thought it looked like an old castle. You know what I mean? By the way, not a cool old, old castle, uh, uh, old castle. Are you with me? Um, so, so that's where we were. Um, I'll tell you a little about the place. The church had been declining. I understand their heyday was in the 60s and 70s. And then it was full of people and kids and stuff. But ever since then, it had been declining. So at this time, uh, we were down to about 70 people. Very old congregation. Very old. Very few children. Very few children. Uh, they had had some divisions. They had had some bad pastors and had to, like, get rid of a pastor. They had been without a pastor uh, a, a year. So that's kind of uh, where they were at. They had talked of closing the doors. That's what was going on, all right? While this is going on, over in Vandalia, a young guy who was me was just catching on fire for Jesus and didn't see that coming. I came to church to get, to get my wife off my back. I didn't believe in Jesus and to save our marriage, but I discovered Jesus. I discovered there was hope, and I was just on fire. I would do anything, man. I started growing and studying the Bible, and I'm like, Jesus, this is, this is unbelievable. This is awesome. And then God called me to be a pastor, and I would have done whatever in the world to be a, to be a pastor. And by this incredible set of circumstances I don't have time to go into, God made it possible for me to become the pastor of that church uh, with no experience or anything. Um, I actually have a picture of my very first Sunday there of being a pastor to show you what this place was like. So that's kind of the whole church, and they're like laying hands on me. And I don't know how well you can see that from out there, but can you tell it's a lot older? They're all old. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's why I love young kids. They're all old, man. They're ancient. Yeah, they're uncool. Yeah, but I love that they said that. They're all old. Yeah. That was it. That was our church, man. We were, yep, so, so um, cool. Now, on paper, it didn't look like a very good gig, all right? I had Christian friends that are like, Mike, I left a pretty comfortable career in engineering. They're like, Mike, you should not do that, dude. Wait for a better gig. You know what I mean? Uh, wait, wait, wait for a better gig. Uh, the church was divided. They had no air conditioning. Is, is that a big deal? Is that, I love that everybody's like, by the way, then, 12 years, no, this isn't a big deal. We don't need air conditioning. I'm like, I do, you ding-dongs, and the people we're trying to meet, reach do. So, yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. It is a big deal. They, they hadn't had a pastor for a year, and maybe the worst thing, the biggest thing going against us was it was in Medway, all right? Now, <laughs> forgive me, Medway-onians, whatever you're called, forgive me, all right? All right? If you're from Vandalia... Medway's only known for one thing. Can we be honest? Do you know what it is? The booby bar, all right? It's the booby bar that advertised on WTUE, right? I mean, let's just be honest. Let's just keep it real. And then I asked last service, I said, but praise God, the booby bar is closed, right? 
And this guy, no, it's not, right? Is it closed? I know. So listen to what dude does first service. Let's have a little fun for a second. He goes, no, it's not closed. I think it's under new management. (laughs) I think they just remodeled. It's like, shut up, dude. You are digging a hole for yourself. What are you doing, man? Anyways, too much information. Anyways, it was in Medway. So if you study successful church movements, there's three things you want to look for. Right time, right leader, and right place. And if you would ask me 12 years ago, I would have probably told you honestly, we don't have any of those going for us at all. In terms of the right time, it's bad time. It's been declining, and so it's not good time. In terms of right leader, the best we got right now is me, and I have no experience or anything. You know what I mean? And, and we're in Medway off the main drag in this building. So, ugh. so, so it didn't look like a, a, a good gig. On paper, it was a train wreck, but God. And don't ever forget, but God. So whatever you're here for this morning is because of but God. And one of the things we love to say around here is, don't ever shrink God. You have no idea what God can do in your life when you learn to unleash his power, and we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about that today. So I only had two things going for me at all, and they, and, and they were just normal things, all right? And here's what they were. Uh, I had faith. I had faith, boy. I had faith, and I had courage. That was it. Faith and courage courage. And the Bible says, with God, all things are possible. Do you know that? If you just have a little bit of faith and some courage, all things are possible. So the first point is, you must have faith and courage and believe that God's ways are higher than your ways. You got to have faith and courage, all right? And just believe that God can do something. This is the reason why I'm sober today and not dead. Because I had just a little bit of faith and just a little bit of courage uh, to do the work, and that's why I'm sober. This is the reason why I'm still married today. It's because I had a little bit of faith that God could heal our marriage and a little bit of courage to do the work. And this is the reason that God's done this incredible miracle in this church, because of a little bit of faith and a little bit of courage. And with faith and courage, you can do anything. And with God, all things are possible. Listen to Joshua 1, 6 through 9. I love that God puts this in here. Listen to how many times. Be strong and courageous because I've got plans for you. You're going to lead these people to inherit the land. This is some of you that are married. Be strong and courageous. You're supposed to lead your wife. Be strong and courageous. Parents, you're supposed to lead your kids to an incredible new place. Be strong and courageous. Be, and then it says again, be strong and courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. When we come now to Christ, we begin to live new way and follow God's ways. It's new to us. We have to learn this, and, and God will reveal this to us. It says, don't let this book of law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful when you start uh, living God's ways. And then it says, have I not commanded you? Now we're into I'm commanding you. Be strong and courageous. So you need to be strong and courageous. There's another thing that you must have in order to experience the power of God. It's point number two. You must have vision. This is huge. Proverbs 29, 18, and this is from the King James. This is the version of this I recommend you you memorize. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Have you heard that? Right? I'm going to say it again. I'm going to ask as a family, we can say it on three, because I want this for your family, for your life. But it's where there is no vision, the people perish. Let's say this on three. One, two, three. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Never forget that. Never forget that. Vision is so important to what God wants to do in your life. When our staff met with Pastor uh, Jake this week, I said, hey, man, here's what. Here's what. You ask these guys. They see this from the outside and ask him anything you want. And he said, okay. He said, I, I, I'm excited about that. He says, what is it about Mike as the leader of the church, because he's a pastor, that has led to the Medway story? And I'm like, uh. And, 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 and then um, there was time for them to answer. And here's what our staff meetings are like. I should have been all polished and professional and behaving and serious. And I'm over there yelling like, oh, oh. Tell them it's my refined leadership skills and tell them it's how, how, how encouraging I am. I'm so encouraging in my good looks and charm. Tell them, guys. 
And they're like, shut up. We're trying to be serious, man. And, and, and here's what they said, though. Like God broke out. They said, um, Mike brought vision to this church. We never had vision like that. Vision's everything. Without vision, the people perish. And then Pastor Sean said this, and I'm like, whoa. That was profound because it's true. He said, he said um, th- this church is fired up and laser focused to one vision. We're all united now to one vision. If you're new here, I'm going to tell you what it is right now. So imagine 12 years ago, I come into a declining church, and here was the vision, and here's, and here's what it took. It's like, hey, guys, they, they were divided. They'd had a rough past. They were scared, possibility of uh, closing the doors. And here's young crazy guy with, with zero experience. And it's like, hey, guys, I wasn't part of your past. I'm aware of that. And I'm sorry for your past. That's it. From now on, from now forward, this church is going to be about one thing. And you can get on board or not get on board, but this is where we're going. We're going to be about sharing God's love with all people no matter what. That's the way we're going to roll from now on. And we're going to be about building radical followers of Christ. So if you're about playing church, you're not going to like it around here. We're going to make radical followers of Christ. And we're going to reach the world. And they kind of looked at me like, (laughs) sure you are, right? Right, because here's what it was like before then. It was like when it came to to, uh, sharing God's love with all, but here's the way the church rolled, and this is true. I remember this so much. We all this, including me. We believed in the church, but not our church. So even me, first year or so, if we wanted to invite people to church, we invited them to another church, some of you came from churches like that, right? You're like, oh, don't come here. We don't have it yet. No, don't come here. We invited people to another church. When it came to building radical followers, well, there was pretty much no, no outreach. It was inward focus. So the main outreach was the annual chicken noodle dinner. That was the ministry. And we charged nine fifty. dollars right? That's the outreach. Now, isn't it cool that God took the church that did that and with vision have given away 110,000 free breakfast. Isn't that cool that God did that? And then it's like, now we're going we're gonna to reach the world. Sure we are. And they're like, we're already doing that. We write a check to this family in South America. You should meet them. I'm like, dude, I'm not talking about them changing the world. I'm talking about you changing the world. Oh, so we would preach this, and we'd get up and begin to preach this stuff. So, so I'd be like, we got to share and build and reach. And I would get up and preach, and I guess in a Hawaiian shirt. <sighs> Which means I can't go visit other churches anymore. i got to stay here so Sean can't talk about me in a Hawaiian shirt. Are you with me? My wife's like, you need to wear a Hawaiian shirt. I couldn't find one, all right? I think he made it up. But anyways, um. I'd get up, yeah, I remember that, thank you. I would get up, for three years, that's all I wore was Hawaiian shirts. Don't judge me, all right? And I would get up and preach, we're fishers of men, not keepers of the aquarium. And we're going to share God's love. We're going to build radical followers right here in Medway. We're going to change the world. And much to my surprise, God moved through vision. God, God began to move. God moves through vision, and he does this in your personal life. So where do you need vision? This is huge to your personal life. I remember the very first week I came with my wife to church and she was going to leave me and I just sensed there was hope and I'm like, I believe it is possible for us to have a Christian marriage. I believe someday it's possible for me to like read the Bible and like pray with my wife. I don't know how all this could happen. I believe it's possible for my kids to grow up somehow, know the Lord, and for them to want to live. I believe this is possible somehow. And I had enough courage to have vision like that. I remember God changed my heart. I grew up in a, in a very prejudiced family, prejudiced towards everybody, full of hatred. And I, I, when I became a Christian, I'm like, this is not right. You can't be a Christian and have any hatred in your heart. I'm like, that stops with me. And I have four kids and I brought them up. There will be no hatred and no prejudice in your lives. And and God honored that through the vision. 
me and my wife had regrets about college and lack thereof and all this. And it's like, you know what? My vision for this family is that all my kids, all four, would love the Lord and get a minimum of a bachelor's degree. And that is absolutely on all their radar because of the vision. God works through vision. So what would your vision be for your family right now? I want you to think about that. Maybe right now you're like, oh, I, could never, I could never see our marriage being healthy. It can be. You need to have a vision for that and what that would take. Or you could never see yourself being healthy. With God, all things are possible. You could never see your finances being healthy. You wouldn't believe the miracles that have happened. You just need vision and you need to do the work. You need to be committed. The Bible says God searches the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. God works through your commitment. So, uh, you must have vision. And finally, you must have a plan. A plan. And I came up with this incredible saying. I'm going to test you with a little bit. I'm like, this is really good. And I came up with this, and here, here it is. Plans won't succeed. This is my line. Tell me what you think of it. Plans won't succeed if you don't have a plan. Not bad, right? Can we all agree on that? I mean, I'm like, that's Oprah Winfrey good, man. That is good. Don't you? That's like book material, don't you think? Think about it. Plans won't succeed if you don't have a plan. Listen to the way uh, uh, God puts it, Proverbs 16. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. But plans won't succeed if you don't have a plan. So you got to have a plan for God to work in your life. So when I um, came to uh, uh, a recovery, I'm dying of alcoholism. I remember going to my first meeting, just crying my eyes out. I'm like, i got a plan. Here it is, a two-part plan. A lot of my plans are two parts, just two simple parts. I'm going to go to a meeting a day every day for a year because I'm fighting for my life. And I'm going to work these 12 steps with a sponsor, all 12 of them. God worked through that plan. God works through plans. When me and my wife walked into church and we weren't living together and needed a miracle to, to be married, I'm like, I got a plan. From now on, <laughs> this, this has been a long time ago, 18 years ago. From now on, we're going to go to church every week. We're never going to miss church, and we will always be in a small group because we need it. We're messed up. And if we ever get healthy enough that we don't need it, we're going to go to help others and pay it forward. And God has worked through that plan. And so you need a plan. When I was uh, 343 pounds, I need a plan to get healthy. So here's what I got. I got to watch what I eat. I can't eat whatever I want anymore as much as I'd like to. Freaking funnel fries. You got to have a limit on them things, right? Did anybody try them? Did anybody try them? Nobody thought they was as good as I did, did you? You had to be here for this, all right? But I'm like, you can't eat whatever you want, and I got I to gotta do delayed gratification. I must work out every day, and I'm not allowed to work work. For me, it's church, church work until I work out. God's honored that plan. Now, in any one of those, if you pick and choose part of the plan or do half the plan, is that going to work? No. you got to follow the whole plan. So many people, um, pastors say, we've had a miracle, kind of, in a small town for a church, an incredible miracle. And people say, how did that happen? And we have opportunity to help people. And we're like, vision's huge. Courage is huge. But you got to have a plan. Well, what's that mean? Well, it's just simple. Look at our bulletin. People love it. They're like, give me a copy. And I'm like, right there, share, build, reach. Everybody in our church, and that's how we roll. And then we got a plan for growth right here. You can come to me first week and figure, I'm like, this is an awesome plan. You should steal it. If I told you to write a plan to become a radical follower of Christ, if you can do any better than this, and it's okay, seriously, let me know. If you think we should tweak that, let me know. It's an awesome plan that God's kind of come up with. And here it is. Attend worship every week. Won't miss. Uh, read the Bible and pray daily. We're going to teach you how to do that, but it's important. By the way, if you miss, all right, so you're like, oh, no, I forgot to read the Bible yesterday. I've been trying so hard, I forgot. What do you do? Don't come back to church ever again, and you're out. You're out of the kingdom of God <laughs> forever, right? You're out. You're out. People think that. You just pick up, Right? I've been trying, I mean, it happens to me. I confess last service. Sometimes I binge on the Bible. 
or I get, I'm doing this new plan where I'm reading through in a year, and so I'll work all ahead, and then, and then I'm like, oh, I missed a day. And my old thinking says, oh, you know what, just throw in the towel, Mike. That's horrible. Just pick it up, man. All right? Commit to a God job. We're all about serving here. Everybody here, we want to have a God job on Sunday. You come one service and serve one service. It'll change your life. You can sign up today. Commit to a small group. That's everything. And you, now you're going to be all in. You commit to tithing and a lifestyle of generosity. And we said two weeks ago, 95% commitment to God is still 5% short. So if that plan of five parts or 100%, how much are you committed to God? I just want to challenge you to be all in. That's when God works, when you're all in with your plan. One final thing we did. We said from now on, and this is going to be huge in your life, we're going to show our love for God. We're all about God's revealed his love to us. We show it back by serving and inviting. So we said we're going to be a church where this is how we show our love for God. Not by chicken noodle dinner, by serving and inviting. So he said, everybody serves, everybody has a God job, and everybody signed up and just became alive, and that's how so many things have happened here. And then we say, uh, everybody here should invite people. We should all invite people. And I remember, um, I remember this was really wild. If you look at that and the old people, I remember a big week in the life of our church. It was like in the first year, there was like 70 people, and this young guy walked in. And we're like, does anybody know him? Is he related to anybody? And they're like, no, he was visiting. So we go to talk to him, and we discovered he was normal. <laughs> we're like, he's normal. He's not a creeper. He's not a weirdo. God brought a normal guy here. This is awesome. What do we do with him, right? He's still here. He ended up marrying a beautiful young lady. He's a great Christian dad and a small group leader, and it's just incredible. So we had to decide as a church now, God's doing things, he's moving. Here's a question every church has to deal with. Who do we invite? Who does a healthy church invite? And we had to work through this, and we began to ask questions like, well, who would you want to invite? In the real world, who would you want to invite to church? So we would ask people, who would you want to invite? Well, I would like to invite my dad. But my dad's never liked any church. He doesn't like churches. Well, man, we should probably maybe invite him because this is a different kind of church. He might actually like it. Some people say, well, I'd like to invite my friend, but, but, but they're like a drug addict and they're, they're messing around with recovery. They're having, invite them. Our pastor's in recovery. It's a different kind of church. Maybe they would like it, right? Uh, just, I don't know. I don't know. Invite them. Uh, some, who, who would you like to invite? I'd like to invite my friend, but you don't know my friend. My friend's like from the street. He cusses a lot. Like sometimes he'll even drop the F-bomb. It's like, dude, we did a series called F-bomb. Invite them, man. They would like it. Did you know we did a series called F-bomb? It was an awesome series. It wasn't about what you think it was about. It was an awesome series. Invite them. Well, I have friends, and they're living a different lifestyle. They're gay or straight or this or that. Who cares? Invite them. This is a special kind of church that loves everybody. Invite them. So we're like, hmm, what do we do with this? So we began to study the Bible, and we're like, who should we invite? Because a lot of churches don't teach this or train this. We're like, if we go back to John, and it says, for God so loved the world, who is that talking about? Yeah. We decided as a church, that meant everybody. Not church people. That's everybody. And when, when Jesus climbed up on that cross and stretched out his arms to offer grace, who did he stretch out his arms for? Everybody. He said, man, he did that for everybody. Everybody, church. And when he rose from the dead, he died for our sins, and he rose from the dead, and he said, you go share my love with the whole world. We're like, who's that? That's everybody. So maybe we should be a church that would try to invite everybody and just see what happens. So we began to get crazy. We do. I had a guy walk in the middle of the service and act like an alcoholic, and, and he's all, and he's like, I'm like, would you love him? Would you love him? Would you invite him? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm like, you need to go invite everybody. And we would teach them. She said, God drops little people off in, in your life, and he's to test to see if you will invite them to his home, to his life. Will you invite everybody? And so we just trained. We should invite everybody. And God began to just move. And God began to bring more 
normal people here and abnormal people here. And God brought black people here and white people here and straight people here and gay people here. And it didn't matter. God brought everybody here. And this movement of God began. And these ministries began. We began to serve breakfast, and that turned into 110,000 breakfasts. And we're like, let's start taking mission trips. And we took mission trips all over, and people just went. And now we built five houses in Haiti. Let's baptize people. And the first, I remember the first girl, she was here last service, we baptized. That, now we baptized like 500 people. And the Holy Spirit just, just, boom. Because we said, from now on, we're going to invite everybody. And here's what I can tell you for sure for the future of this church. The doors of this church are open to everybody, church. And that's your job. And I called you to be a group of people who lives your life to share the good news of God's love with all people and build radical followers and you be world changers and you invite everybody because you're inviting them to his kingdom. It's a new life that changes the world in generations. And it's your job. And I can't wait to see what God's going to do. And I hope you will get this right. I want to do something special before we pray. There's some people here that, uh, they're just really special to me. And we'll do this again in 12 years, and this will be really special to me. But if you were one of those original people that was here 12 years ago, would you stand right now for us just so I can see? who's here in this service. They don't want to stand. See, there's very few. Do you see? Can we celebrate them? They sacrifice so much. You have have no idea uh, what we've sacrificed, went through, worked through for God to do this movement and this affected so many of your lives. And going forward, I hope that you will sacrifice so much to affect so many lives with the greatest news ever. The greatest thing you can do with your life is share Christ. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? Father God, we love you, and I thank you for everybody. I thank you for everybody who's here this morning. No matter who you are or why you're here or how long you've been here, God loves you. He's crazy in love with you. And I'm going to tell you something. We love you too. And we don't have any judgment for you or any condemnation. We just want to share God's love with you. And it's stinking awesome. It will change your life forever. If you're looking for a church, welcome home. Uh, If you've been playing church, please stop. It's time to become a radical Christ follower and live for something greater than yourself. If you've never crossed that line, and there needs to be a time for all of us, I, I, didn't, I couldn't believe it happened, but where you're like, I, I don't know, but you know what? I'm going to put both feet in the door and follow Jesus. I'm going to check this out the best of my life, but I'm all in. That's you right now. You can just pray in your heart, God, forgive me for my sins. I want to follow Jesus. I've sensed a tugging here this morning. That's God, and I'm going to follow you. And we can't wait to help you with your journey and see you grow. And God, I pray that in 12 years from now, we will look back and we will stand up and we will see that we have affected hundreds and thousands of lives with the greatest news in the world. Give us courage. Where do you need courage in your life today? Give us vision, vision to be world changers. Where do you need vision in your life right now, in your family? You come up with a plan and you follow it and stick to it through the power of God. God, we love you and we praise you. We pray these things in Jesus' name.